All right, grade six, I hope that you're doing well today. So if you can remember yesterday, we have started to speak about uh, the writing process. And we said that while writing, we first start by uh, having some general idea. And after the general idea, we'll start uh, by being more specific and later to choose just one idea in order to speak about. Yesterday, we have collected some ideas about online studying. Some of you said that uh, we have some problems during classes. Others said that we have some downsides. Uh, and uh, we are referring also to both uh, teachers and also students. Uh, and later, or one of the most important uh, features of online teaching is uh, the used devices in the process. Uh, because if you're using a good device, it will help you a lot uh, in your uh, learning process or uh, the whole of uh, the process of uh, online studying or teaching. And also, if you're using uh, a very old one, it will not help you. And we have many members of the studying. We have mentioned some of them, like the teacher, student, administration, ministry, parents, uh, the environment itself around all of them, all of that contributes in the process of online studying. Okay? And uh, one of you has mentioned a very wonderful idea, which is uh, using vir uh, virtual reality. And actually, that's one of the most important ideas uh, that uh, some schools inside Saudi Arabia right now are working upon. Uh, why not using virtual reality? in uh, the process of online studying yeah, since both uh, students and teachers are staying home so let's use uh, this process in order to help us uh, a little in order to make uh, a face-to-face -face, uh, contact with the student teacher uh, learning process so that was uh, some of the best important ideas uh, that you just uh, said yesterday in today's session we will start by uh, some ideas also about the writing process how to collect ideas how to be general or specific and what is uh, the most important or the best way to write uh, a piece of writing that is well uh, written so let's start by this video and then let's continue our commentary <laughs> The most terrifying part of the writing process is staring deep into the pale, soulless void of your word processing program and watching the cursor blink at you, waiting, its blank face judging you, mocking your ability to write even a single word, filling you with existential dread. Don't let the dread sink in. You don't need to fear the blank page. Part of what makes writing so hard is knowing how big of a project it is and not knowing how to break it up. Having a process to break up the work into more manageable chunks lessens the dread and makes the writing much easier. Today, let's talk about some of the ways in which composition scholars have divided up the process and how you can use those divisions to improve your workflow. The writing process as we think of it in the Western part of the world was originally explained by Cicero, a Greek politician and rhetorician from the time of Julius Caesar. When composing a speech to be delivered in public, he said that there were five canons or sections to the process, which he called invention, arrangement, style, memory, and delivery. This arrangement, so again, style. The canons of uh, rhetoric, which is the process of writing. Canons of rhetoric is the process of writing. The same one, but uh, using different uh, terms. So we have invention to invent idea, arrangement in order to arrange those ideas, your style of writing, the memory that you are using, and last memory but not least, and delivery. the delivery. How to deliver those to the reader. To Cicero, invention meant finding and developing your material. Specifically, things like, what's your topic? What do you want to argue? How will you organize it? In the invention phase, the writer worked out the major parts of their argument, their evidence and reasoning, and their goals. Arrangement meant organizing and structuring your material. This was where you decided on a format and an order for your points and how you would argue them. Style was the art and ornamentation you used when communicating your message. This is where you focused on the actual words you would use to make your speech both artful and memorable. Since people didn't give speeches with written notes back then, they memorized them instead. So for Cicero, memorizing your speech was the next step. In modern terms, we think of this more as preparing for the argument. 
And finally, delivery was the actual technique of speaking and interacting with your Inflection version divides the process into pre writing, drafting, revision, editing, and publishing. Pre writing is everything you do before you start the actual writing. This includes picking your topic and a research question, doing research, getting your preliminary thesis figured out, brainstorming, and outlining. This is the most important uh, step while writing, which is pre writing. What do you mean by pre writing? Rewriting means what are we gonna do then before even starting the writing process? That's a very important point. Before even, yes, Tamim, you have a question? Uh, uh, no. Okay, no, no problem. No. So, once again, the pre writing process is one of the most important steps while writing. It means that what will we do before even starting the writing process? So we have many things in order to do before writing. Rewriting means before writing. So first we'll have to do a research, like researching for what are you writing about, like the online studying that we studied yesterday. So what are the measures or the procedures? We'll come back, Amir. Why are you late? So what are the procedures for writing? Bibliography, the free writing, the claim, the development, the outlining, the performance, the tense used. So all of these must be done before writing. So you make something called the pre-writing, and after that, we have the drafting. Which is your first attempt to write your entire argument beginning to end with all of the necessary parts. I like to call this my sandpaper draft because it's usually pretty rough. Revising process is where you start the essay on the big picture level, changing or revising points, rearranging paragraphs, adding or removing entire ideas, or revamping your intro and conclusion. Publishers usually call this the revision stage. Once all the right bits are in the right place, then you can do all the fine detail sentence level editing. This can include word choice, topic sentences, grammar, and proofreading. The version produced at this stage is usually called a proof. And the last stage is putting your writing out into the public venue that you have chosen. Okay, so this is pretty ideal. It's actually Once again, some of the most important rules while writing. First, you have some processes. Number one is the pre-writing process. Pre-writing process means the process before even starting to write. So, first we have pre-writing. Pre-writing, what will we do before writing? Drafting, to put all what we have prepared in the before writing process into chronological order. Then we will have our revising. Let's revise what we have you done. So did we write correct, did we use, or did we use the correct tense or not? And after doing that, we will have something called editing. And editing means making your writing even better and better. And last but not least, you have publishing, or delivering your piece of writing. So once again, I need you to write those steps. And for your thesis statement, but at the end of the day, you'll follow all these from beginning to end. I need you to write those steps, rewriting, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing. Those are very, very important. So if you have a pen and a marker, please, or a pen and a piece of paper, please write those. Writing a process consists of the writing process, consists of and write those rewriting drafting revising editing and publishing so those are the main five steps of the pre-writing or the writing process 
pre-writing to so prepare for writing, drafting, to put that in a chronological order, to revise what you have written, to edit it into a correct sentence, and later to publish it to the audience. Still with me, grade six? Yes, Iyad? Is, uh, is to teach us to just like, uh, just like write it in another paper, then to review what you wrote and make sure just like it's, it's everything is correct. Bravo. Yes. Then going to the paper that you will actually write in and try writing it at your best handwriting. Excellent. Yeah. So let's imagine that we have a piece of paper here. Okay. That's an empty paper, right? And for example, we have something first called the pre-writing process, as we just said, right? We have the pre-writing process first. And the pre-writing process, I'll start with something that is called free writing. Free writing. What is the meaning of free writing? Free writing, when we start just by write each idea and all the ideas that come in our mind. For example, when we spoke about uh, the online studying, we started by collecting some ideas. That's called the free writing. We have problems during class, we have outside, and we start just by writing and writing. Teacher, and here we will write student. And later we will write here, for example, uh, device. Uh, here we will write uh, uh, administration. Okay, and we start just by something called free writing without chronological order, without anything, just writing some ideas. And later in the second page, we'll or in the same page, but down, we'll make our draft. So, first, number one, I'll speak about the rule of the teacher. Number two, I'll speak about how should the student receive the information. And number uh, three, for example, I uh, will speak about the used device. That's uh, it's called what drafting. And later, after I finish my drafting and my free writing, I'll come into a new paper and I'll start by writing my topic or my paragraph. I'll start in the middle of the sentence, writing the title, and later I'll have something called topic sentence. And the topic sentence, we start, by example, online teaching, online studying has become an important Part of our day today life. And then we start by collecting the ideas that we have already made in the drafting and by writing them in a chronological order. Chronological order. Chronological order means to write them in a correct sequence, step by step. First, we'll take the idea or the part of the teacher and we start writing about the teacher in a whole paragraph and later jump to the student and later the device the parents administration and step by step everything that we have already done in the free writing and in the drafting everything that we have done here and here we start by just doing what we start by collecting the ideas from here in order to write them in a chronological order and the paragraph. Okay, Iyad? Yes, Iyad. Okay, that was a great idea from you. So you just got the idea. You start here by the free writing and drafting, and later by writing in a separate paper. That's excellent from you, Iyad. Okay, so this is. So once again, we have major five steps in writing rewriting, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing. I have started writing about 
both of these, the free writing, which is called sometimes free writing, and the drafting. This is pretty ideal. It's actually not unusual to cycle back a step or two as you revise your draft as you realize a better shape, a kind of evidence or direction for your thesis statement. But at the end of the day, you'll follow all these from beginning to end. So what good does it do you to know all these steps anyhow? And how does it prevent that terror that comes with looking at a blank page? The answer is workflow. Everybody needs a plan for how to get their work done easily, accurately, and without a lot of frustration. And a good workflow can do that for you. Simply put, keep the steps separate in this workflow and you'll get a much faster and better result. So once again, while writing, we need to keep those steps uh, what separate. Okay, yeah. So start first by determining the title. And after determining the title, we start by the free writing. And after the free writing, we try to collect some ideas and information, do our drafting, and later to do what? And later to start writing. So far, so good. Okay, teacher. Any questions so far? Amir, Khalid, Riyadh, Saq, Tamim? Yeah, no questions at all. Okay. And be aware that in today's assignment, we're going to write a full written paragraph, not like yesterday's assignment. Don't throw a wrench into the gears of the writing process by doing multiple things at the same time. For instance, if you try to start writing while you're still researching and outlining, drafting is going to take a lot longer because you'll keep changing your mind on what you want to say and how to say it. It also tends to stunt your writing process, your research, and confuse the structure. If you revise and draft at the same time, you're choking off ideas before you can get them down on the page. This often causes writer's block. It's also extremely slow, and you tend to lose good ideas that you second guess early on, but then end up being useful later. If you try to do big picture and fine detail revision at the same time, by mixing revising and editing, you also get into trouble. Sentence level changes tend to win out, leaving a clean surface, but leaving problems with the structure of the argument. If you need to go back to a previous step, that's fine. Just put down your work until that step is done and then come back. Let's say that you get a paper assigned to you on the first of the month and it's due on the 29th. How should you divide up your time? I highly recommend that you don't do what I used to do, which was wait till a week before the essay was due to start panicking. I then guess I all of us do that, right? If you have an assignment and it's uh, due at the end of the month, all of us just uh, wait until uh, the day it uh, do then, and then we start to panic. I think that's all of us, not just uh, here. I'd lock myself in the library doing research all weekend, bang out a draft in a couple of days trying to edit as I went, hopefully proofread the morning I turn it in, and then call it done. Do you want writer's block? Because I can attest, this is how you get writer's block. It's also how you get half-baked ideas, awkward papers and unsatisfying results, not to mention ulcers. If I needed to go back to pre-writing something in my paper, I wouldn't have time. I'd have to stick with whatever I came up with on the first shot. Writer's block can come from a lot of factors, okay. but one of them is the amount of pressure to complete a project. More pressure makes it harder to write. Lower stakes make it easier to get things done on the page. Think about it. Before jumping to that, uh, we just need to stick to these uh, five major steps. Have you written them? Hmm. Have you written those steps, guys? Pre writing the process, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing. Great sex is still with me. Amir, Iyad, Khalid, Riyad, Sakr, Tamim. I'm here. Okay, so have you written those steps? Pre-writing, drafting, revising. Pre-writing, drafting, uh, re revising, editing. And publishing. Publishing. Yeah, those are the major five steps. The major five steps of writing. I need you to write them in your notebook. So that uh, when we start writing, we just uh, come back to them as 
our resources. So once again, what is the meaning of rewriting or free writing? What does rewriting mean? What is the meaning of rewriting? Yad? Yes, teacher. Yeah, what is the meaning of rewriting? Uh, re uh, teacher, it's writing before you even just like start writing the message or paragraph. Okay, so what you do before writing the message or the paragraph? Excellent, or the essay. Nice. I will, uh, I will uh, just like write it in another paper, then yep. check it, then edit some words, Rob. then draft it in the real message, then probably send it. Excellent. So simply rewriting means the process that you do before you start your final draft paper. So. As Iyad said, we can start by writing randomly in a page, and later from that page, we can just start by collecting some ideas, randomly, of course, without any organization, and from those ideas, we start by doing our drafting. Drafting means writing the ideas in some chronological order. And by writing those chronological orders, this will help you later in order to determine your own paragraph, where to start and where to finish. Yes, Riyadh? Yes, yes. You have a question, Riyadh, or you're fighting with your brother? Uh, no, just uh, I did something wrong. <laughs> no problem, okay. <laughs> so once again, we have some major steps in every process in writing. Every and all processes of writing, we have the same five steps. Rewriting, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing. Apply these steps to number one, writing a, a paragraph, writing a piece of paper, writing a draft, writing an essay, writing a final paragraph in an exam, writing a book, a novel, a story, a play, anything, anything concerning writing shall be applied to those five major steps of writing once again and final time we have rewriting drafting revising editing and finally publishing so far so good you have any question no all right, that's going to be it for today. And please try to apply those steps in your assignment today. And I'm just going to upload that video on Classera. See you.